Lift up your hands and praise his holy name. Has he been your protector? Has he been your deliverer? Has he been your healer? Has he been your provider? Would you just give him thanks this morning, Father? We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We testify of your greatness, of how awesome and wonderful and mighty you are. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. Because, Lord, I just sense your presence in this room, and I pray, God, those that do need healing today, those that do need deliverance, those that need strength today, those that need comfort today, God, we lift up your many several attributes, God, of how awesome and holy and wonderful. You're all that to us, God. 
and I pray that you would touch your people today that are in need. Because you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, I'm a father. always precious and unique when we have someone baptized here in the family room. Whether it's a child or a senior adult or anybody in between. Because it's about confession. 
It's about having the opportunity to testify without ever speaking a word. It's one of the rare times that you get to testify without having to talk. Because what it says is that you have died with Christ, been buried with Christ, and have risen from the dead with Christ. Young Paul Thompson has found Jesus and he's confessed him to be Lord and Savior of his life. And Paul is in the baptismal tank with his father. Craig is a credentialed minister. That's dangerous. <laughs> we love Craig and his dad called as a minister of the gospel and he said, I want to, uh, I want to baptize Paul. And Paul made that request and I think it's absolutely beautiful, don't you? And so, Paul, based on your profession of faith, we take great delight in baptizing you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's celebrate new life. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. finally found some time to be with you today. It's just been a horrible mommy day. It all started this morning. I mean, we were late for school, but it was all my fault. But I was still really frustrated with the kids. And I just kept saying, come on, come on. Let's go, go, go. Dear God, my mommy is the best. Because in the mornings on the way to school, we play the let's go, go, go game. And, and my brothers, well, my brothers always win. But, but one day my mommy says that my legs are going to grow really long and I'll win, but not today. Just, I feel so bad. I, I had so much I had to get done and so many errands. I, I kept my baby girl in the car all day. I, I had to go to the post office and the grocery store and the dry cleaners. How fun is that? Today was an adventure day with mommy. We went lots of places, but first we went to the post office and I had to pick out the stamps. And I asked the postman, I said, do you have stamps with flowers on them? And he said, no. And I said, do you have stamps with bunnies on them? And he said, no. And so I said, do you have stamps with birds on them? And he said, no. And so I said, just give me the flags. But then we went to the grocery store and it was my job to pick out the bread. And then when we were in the car ride on the way home, me and mommy played I Spy. And I always win at that game because I always spy something white and it's a cloud and she never guesses it. But I told her one day that she would win, but not today. The other moms, they stay home and plan crafts and do great and fun things with their kids. And you know, they even make those bologna sandwiches with the mustard smiley faces on them. My little girl, peanut butter and jelly every day. My mommy knows that peanut butter and jellies are my favorite sandwich. We always put the bread on one side of, with the peanut butter, and then we put the jelly on the other side of the bread, and then we smush it together and we sing a song. We sing, peanut butter, peanut butter, jelly, 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 and then the bread gets stuck in between my teeth. It's just, I do realize, Lord, that I have such a short time with her and, and my boys. I just, I feel like I'm wasting it. My brothers, well, they get to ride the school bus in the mornings on the way to school. And I told my mommy this morning that it was about time that I go to, to kin, kindergarten. And she said that I can't go yet because I'm a big help around the house. And I said, I'm a helper? And she said, you are more help than you will ever know. I feel like the only quality time I got with her today was when I tucked her into bed tonight. But God, my favorite time of the day is when Mommy tucks in me in bed at night. She takes me and she wraps me in her arms and she says, I love you, baby. And I say, I'm not a baby. But then she sings to me, Jesus loves me, this I know. 
For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Night, night, mommy. Good night, baby. this life I have already come and he keeps on giving the grace and the strength to just keep pressing on he's given a promise
to turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 31. And um, we're going to read a couple of verses at the end of that great chapter. And while you're doing that, let me just say welcome to those that are here as guests today. Pastor Jason has already done that, but we'd also like to welcome those who are joining us by live stream this morning and various places around the country. And um, we're so glad that you take the time to tune in and be part of this family, family room worship experience. And uh, we thank you for that. The words are on the screen, and uh, let's read them out loud together. I think it'd be beautiful to do that. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing but a woman who fears the Lord. Stop right there. I want you to repeat that with me. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Father, thank you for your sweet presence in this room. We believe that you are going to infuse your presence into the lives of people as your word goes forth and may we leave here full of hope full of understanding that you have got everything in control in Jesus name amen you may be seated I think oftentimes a good woman's deeds are overlooked and perhaps taken for granted I think all of us would admit that we've taken good women and godly mothers for granted at one time or another in our lives. I will not ask you to raise your hand if you've ever done that. But think about all the good. Think about all the good a godly woman does for her community, her workplace if, if she works outside of the home, her children, her family, and if married, even her spouse. Think about the average daily duties that a good woman or a mother can potentially perform on a daily basis. Some women work and are in many cases still responsible for meals and laundry. I see some of the men dropping their head right now. Shopping, transportation, housekeeping, kids' homework, nursing, banking, the checkbook, School involvement, community involvement, sports. I've seen them coach. Music, exercise, and the list goes on and on and on and even can seem unending. Thank God for beautiful, good women and godly mothers. Amen? I know you've given the Lord praise already for them, but can we do that again? We can't praise Him enough for good, godly women. Now, not every good woman has the same responsibilities, and I think it's important to note that on Mother's Day. Sometimes we have probably been a little bit insensitive and overlooked a number of good, godly women on Mother's Day that contribute so much to their families, to workplaces, and spouses, and yet they haven't been able to bear children. And today I want to honor all of them. I want to honor all of them. And here's the thing. I believe we can honor mothers without alienating other good women. I said, I believe we can honor mothers without alienating other good women. Do you believe that? I want women to feel welcome, appreciated, seen, and needed in this family room. So if you're a woman today, we honor you. Amen? I've been told by women that Mother's Day can be can be awkward. I haven't had a little uh, note sent to me, a little email that uh, actually Steve and Laura sent it where, where sometimes we've been a little bit insensitive and, uh, and this particular article talked about how awkward this woman felt when she had to stand and you know, having all, all mothers stand. And I, I think we've meant, meant well, but after reading it, I did begin to pick up, you know, I can see people in certain situations feeling 
awkward with that. Does the woman who had a miscarriage stand? Does the mom whose children ran away, does she stand? Does the single woman who is pregnant stand? That's awkward. So let's honor the wide continuum of mothering. To those who gave birth this year to the first child, we celebrate you. Amen? To those who lost a child this year, we mourn. We mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wearing the badge of stains, food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or or a runaway child, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility and deal with prods and tears and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We really don't mean to. Sometimes we can say foolish things, and we don't mean to make this harder than it is, do we? To those who foster moms and mentor moms and spiritual moms, we need you too. To those who have disappointed, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests and medical tests and overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out that way, especially if you've longed for it. To those who step-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envision lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. Thank you from the bottom of our heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. I'll say that again. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst, and we remember you. We commend mothering for the ways that it reflects the image of God by bringing forth new life, nurturing those on the path, and living with the tension of providing freedom and a safety net. I can't help it. I want to give praise one more time for mothers and good women. Amen. Amen, amen. We honor you. To all mothers... And to all good women, Proverbs 31, verses 28 through 31, lets us know regardless of how appreciated or unappreciated you feel this morning, your good deeds will not always go unnoticed. There are men, there are people in our lives, there are children that don't know how for some reason to acknowledge it. But the Bible tells us there will be a day when they will. Aren't you glad for that? The truth is you probably deserve far more praise and compliments than you are getting. But these verses tell us that good women who endure with their loving actions will be noticed and praised. Her deeds will not forever go unnoticed. A day will come when her companion, her children, and her community will rise up and give her praise. Well, we've read the passage Many of you know this about Proverbs 31. This chapter was written in a poetic form. The Hebrew alphabet was used as an acrostic in Proverbs 31. It would be similar to a modern-day poet today writing a poem with each line or point beginning with the letters that, uh, well, that start with the letter A and work all the way through Z. I mean, obviously, this was written in Hebrew, and we don't have the opportunity to pick that up unless we know that about, unless you know Hebrew. Too many of you probably don't know Hebrew. But it, obviously in the English we don't catch it. Well, in this chapter, which has been often labeled the virtuous woman chapter, we find in the last few verses that a good woman's deeds will ultimately be praised. Well, the question is, who praises a good woman? And before we answer that question, I think there's another question. Why praise a good woman? Why is she praised? Well, verse 30 answers that. Verse 30 says very clearly, 
Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be what? Praised. What is this verse telling us? A woman who is praised and flattered only for her beauty will find the praises and flattery to be quite short-lived. Beauty, beauty and flattery pass. Because beauty will pass. Listen to me, young women. I think young women need to pick up on this. This is why you should put as much time and attention into your personal character development as you do your outward beauty development. Could I get an amen? amen? Put as much time in your personal character development as you do your outward beauty development. The day will come, you may not believe it, but the day will come when physical beauty will pass. Please hear me, when age catches up for all of us, it always does, and we find ourselves in the latter seasons of life and beyond, and and we may not be celebrated anymore for our physical beauty, but the Bible is telling us your inner beauty will be talked about far beyond and will endure far beyond your physical beauty. And don't misunderstand this verse. Don't misunderstand it. It's not saying one should not give any attention to outward adornment. It's not saying that. It definitely is telling us where our priorities should be. Listen to what Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment. But it, it says, not from outward adornment. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Beauty is power in our times. We've been taught by our culture if you can somehow find physical beauty, it equates to power. It equates to power with men. Am I okay this morning? Beauty can equate to power. It can give power and cause one to be able to get things, certain things they may not get if they were not beautiful as far as what the eye beholds. Beauty is power in our times just it was as it was in Roman times when Peter wrote these words. Roman women adorned themselves so extravagantly that they stacked their hair on their heads and covered themselves with jewels. And the word wearing in Greek means to wrap jewels all over the body. This is not a prohibition on fashion or jewelry. And for years we misunderstood these verses. This is not a prohibition on beauty or giving attention to outward beauty. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is the emphasis should be on cultivating beauty within And how often do we teach our people who are inundated with culture today that we're supposed to look and act a certain way. I'm telling you, the church needs to say, your inner beauty is is so very important. Do you believe that today? The inner self is more important than the outward beauty, temporary wealth and fame. The inner self actually reads in Greek, the hidden man or person of the heart. The heart is the essence of our personality, that part of us that makes us able to commune with God. There's many people who are beautiful when they were young who have very small funerals. And there's people that were not so becoming to look at who will have people lined up for miles going to the graveside because there was something powerful about the beauty that they possessed in their inner being. Am I right? That is why we celebrate godly mothers and women today who model for us true beauty. Proverbs 31, charm is deceptive, it says. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Let's learn to celebrate inner beauty, church. It's probably been far too long since we talked about these things. Let's learn to celebrate inner beauty, regardless of what Hollywood projects. Hmm. How do we do that? The Bible tells us to not only celebrate character, we have to do that, but I think there's another thing that's here. It's the word consistency. Here's where the consistency comes in. No doubt when she was young, 
Proverbs is referring to a woman, the writer is referring to a woman who no doubt was beautiful, but her inner beauty out endured the fleeting beauty on the outside. It endured. Her character outlasted her physical beauty. Her character endured her ability to simply offer flattering words. Her inner beauty continued to make her beautiful. Why is she praised? For her character and her consistency. For her character and her consistency. Let's get to the second question. Who praises her? Who is it that praises her? Isn't it interesting? When a woman has character and integrity and consistency, isn't it interesting that her children is the first people mentioned here that praise her? I mean, they really know her. Her children. It says, the Bible says here at verses 28 and 29, that her children will rise up in that what? Day. There's coming a day. You may not feel that praise now. It may seem to be distant from you as a good woman, as a mother, but children will rise up. There'll come a day when they'll rise up and praise your name. It may be at the funeral. It may be prior to that. We don't know when, but the children, will, the lights will come on and they'll rise up and praise you for your character and your consistency. That's a big praise of the Lord right there. Think about this. A mother's glory is known in the mundane, isn't it? In the daily routine, the acts of love, the acts of love that are so taken for granted, it it may even seem that no one notices the time and effort that went into the preparation for a meal. I I mean, Dad can get all kinds of praise for putting steaks or hamburgers on the grill, and he comes in and sets them down, and she's got the mustard out and the mayonnaise and the ketchup and cut the tomatoes and sliced the dill pickles and, and has a salad, beautiful salad sitting over there and dessert. And he walks in with a pile of steaks that took all of seven minutes to cook and he gets all kinds of praise. It's true. Is it not true? John's getting a little uncomfortable right here. You get the picture. A mom's glory is often seen in the grind, in the mundane. Listen, I know godly women and mothers. There there must be days that you feel like you're about to lose it when it it comes time, and and maybe not today, but but if you can just hang in there and make it through, as the song said, there'll come a day when the praise will come. Oh, come on. Let's give the Lord praise for that. It will come. A day will come. It will come. Listen to me, beauty will not be praised. Your waistline or bodily shape won't be praised when that day comes. Nobody's going to say when you're laying in the casket, Woo, she's got a great waist. (laughs) Yippee. Boy, did she hold it together. Thank God she went to the Y every day. You don't hear that kind of stuff at funerals. It's silly. It passes. It passes. Some of you men love for the wrong reasons. It's not love. You're drawn because of lust. You know, love. There's a big difference. Listen, we need to call it out in our culture. Beauty will pass. It will fade. But, oh, there's an endurance that comes with character and integrity and consistency. Grinding it out. Listen, I don't want our women fearing getting older of age. Listen, if you're caught up and you're so full of fear about getting older, listen, honey, you need to get before the Lord and get rid of that because you're going to miss out on enjoying some beautiful times in life. I love you, but you've got to get rid of that. It'll bind you up. When you understand the value of character, you can age with grace. And the inner beauty will begin to come out in your words and the way you handle yourself with dignity, the way you treat your grandchildren, the way you handle yourself at work, the way you help people, all kinds of new beauty will begin to erupt from the innermost being because of character and consistency. Am I okay today? Many of us this morning may not have biological children. You have spiritual children, people you have been there for through thick and thin. You've worked through the mundane and the grind. Some of you are spiritual mothers today, perhaps never had a child, but you're a spiritual mother. 
You've been willing to pick the phone up. You've been willing to help somebody. We've got women in this church who have never been married, and I'll never forget when our, our babies came, they were giving them little booties and doing all kinds of things that were so helpful and were loving. I'll tell you who it was, Sister Robin. Never been married, but the beauty, she's a mother. She mothers my grandbaby up there in the nursery right now. I'm thankful for mothers like that who never had a child but gives herself to such things. Never married, but she feels called and destined by God to do what she does. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord for godly women like that. You may not have had biological children, but you've worked through the mundane and the grind and you've exercised patience. And when it comes time, maybe not today, but you'll, you'll have somebody rise up and call you blessed and praise you as well. Why? Why do we do that? Why do we honor mothers? Why do we praise mothers? Why do we praise spiritual mothers? Why do we praise godly good women? Well, I can't answer for you, but I praise my mom because she came to my room and put a cool rag on my brow in the middle of the night when I had a fever, and somehow through her prayers and that cool rag, God would break the fever. Thank God for a mother who is willing to get up when I know she was tired. I thank God for a mother that was willing to pick me up when I had no ride after ball practice and would have had to walk to school when it was snowing and cold, but she was always there and on time, ready to pick me up. And I didn't get in the car and say, oh, thank you, Mom, and give her a big hug. But inside, I knew she loved me. I'm thankful for a mom who was willing to drop whatever she's doing. And if I needed to go to the doctor or, 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 or something was wrong, she was always there to listen and, and allow me to talk. I'm thankful for a mother like that. Is anybody else thankful for a mother like that? Yes. Yes. Think about the grind. I'm thankful for a mother that was there in the midnight hour when, when it was a late school project and I was having to be up half the night because I procrastinated. And instead of hollering or getting after me, she stood in there and hung in there with me to help me see my homework project through. Thank God for a mother like that. Thank God for a mother who was patient with me when I wasn't living for Jesus. And she knew I wasn't, but she was careful with her words and seemed to speak at the right time and prayed for godly wisdom. And I would hear her pray, pray in the nighttime when I came home past curfew and she was concerned about me. But she knew how to pray and take me to the throne of God saying, God, save my son. I'm so grateful for a good woman who is my mother. Aren't you? Come on, let all the people give the Lord praise. Come on, let all the people praise the Lord. We are thankful for it. Listen to me. Listen to me. Sons and daughters and spiritual sons and daughters, don't wait for her funeral to say good things about her. Say it to her today face to face. There's a lot of good things I said to my dad, and I told you this a few weeks ago. One of the things I'm working through in my little grieving process is I wish I would have said some things to his face that I said and meant in his funeral. So here's my encouragement to you. Say it today. Please say it today. Tell her. Tell her how you feel. Rise up and praise her today. Not only her children, but her companion. The Bible said her husband the Bible says in verse 28b, also praises her. The person who knows her best praises her the most. That's a sign of character. Did you get that? The person who knows her best praises her the most. He gets to see her in good times and bad times. He sees her with beauty as a young woman. And perhaps he knows that the beauty has faded, but she's still beautiful to him because of her character and what she means as he's fell so deeply in love with her beyond what he ever thought he could possibly imagine. He never believed he could fall in love with her that way because of her beauty, her inner beauty. He continues to go deeper and deeper and deeper in love with her. Her husband has watched those inner jewels become more beautiful and valuable for she's more valuable today than she ever was when she was young. As valuable as he thought she was then. He finds her even more valuable today than he did yesterday. The person who knows her best praises her the most. And thirdly and lastly, her community. Her community. Verse 31b says, 
and let her own works praise her in the gates. Even the community praises her and places value on her because of her contributions. It's obvious that when you read Proverbs 31, this is a woman who not only cared for her household, but she also contributed to her community with her words of wisdom. She contributed to the community by providing a vineyard. She contributed to the community by setting among the elders and, 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 and of the land and lending her wisdom and assurance when she was asked and it was needed. She contributed to, to her, her community in verse 20 by helping the needy in the community. We have good women, women and godly mothers who contribute to this community every day of the week in this family room right here. Some are involved in community organizations and they serve the needy and they demonstrate compassion for the hopeless and the helpless. Some are involved in organizing community events that bring good to our community. Some do things through their church right here as the church reaches out to the community. Some are involved in providing counsel and lending wisdom and leadership when it's needed. Some are involved in education, teaching in classrooms, school activities, mothers involved in school activities which assist the children and families in our community, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on, and it seems almost unending. The community stands at the gate and praises her Maybe you're a woman here today and you don't feel real praised or appreciated. But something on my Facebook post last night as it related to the scripture and I alluded to it if I get some closing music. I uh, put something there. A precious woman that we knew years ago made a comment. I don't feel loved and appreciated. And I know her, and that hurts to know that she feels that way. But I found myself responding, read these verses. Read these verses. A day will come when your son will praise you. You just keep demonstrating good character. And you keep being consistent. And that day will come. Hopefully, she'll get to hear it. So you may be living in the grind, saying, Pastor, all of that sounds good, but I don't feel appreciated. I don't have anybody in my life that's close that says thank you. I don't have anybody in my life that really seems to care. Well, first of all, you do have a heavenly Father who sees every good deed that you do. You're sitting here and you don't feel pretty because somehow a culture or perhaps a husband or a man has made you feel as if you're not pretty. I apologize for that. I apologize for that. That we have such warped views of what beauty is. It's the inside that ultimately counts no matter what somebody tells you. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm not saying it's not good for you to take care of yourself. I'm not saying it's not good for you to look pretty. I am saying, put as much emphasis on the inside. And God will bring that beauty out and it will radiate from you regardless of what culture says. I'm concerned about good women, women and godly women who feel that way about themselves, I want to encourage you. Go to the Lord. Understand who you are in Him. And understand that He'll help develop those inner jewels. Be a woman who fears the Lord. And let Him work in you and bring out those beautiful things. Your children, yes, your ornery husband, if you have one of those, if you don't, cherish him and love him. Cherish the honor and love the honor one too. What am I saying? Love him through it. The day will come when your name will be praised. Think about this. Perhaps it's possible for a woman to fool one of these levels. 
Perhaps you're a woman and you say, well, I got it going with my kids, but I don't love my husband. Or perhaps you've got your husband fooled and not your children or extended family or community. You know, there's different levels with all of this. But the woman who fears the Lord, the woman who fears the Lord will understand that this character comes through in all of these settings and in all of these levels. In your home with your spouse, with your children and grandchildren if you have them, in your community, if you're single with your family, God will have you in strategic places where those inner jewels can manifest. Someone who fears the Lord shall be praised in all three settings, in all three levels. Would you make it your priority today to find a good woman and offer her some appropriate words of praise? Fill her up with kind words. Rise up and speak her praises. I dare you to get at the dinner table chicken and stand up at the table and say, I praise you. I double dog dare you. And tell the whole table of some good things about that good woman that's sitting there. And you women that may not be with anybody today, just know that God loves you. He loves you. And there'll be a day when you'll get the praise. It's a promise. Would you stand? And can we give the Lord praise? Let's give the Lord praise together. Amen.